Hi, Randy the Mobile Home Guy here again today. Today we're going to talk about limit switches on a furnace and what those do and how they react to furnaces and what those kind of look like, maybe kind of where they are and what to look for and maybe some symptoms of why your furnace is reacting the way it is. So here we found that this furnace has a limit switch problem. It's flashing one time um, and telling us limit switch is having a problem. The limit switch is open, okay, which means immediately the fan starts running, okay. So we want to make sure before we do anything on this furnace, we're well, aware of where the power is, moving parts, electrical things, lots of things going on with this furnace. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure it's not some hiccup with the furnace, okay? Sometimes power surge or something to that effect. So when we see this problem, the first thing we're going to want to do, find the power switch, just turn it off, <coughs> okay? And then turn it right back on, okay? Wait five seconds, turn it back on, okay? Sometimes that problem goes away, it was a weird thing happened, okay? And make sure that that uh, uh, doesn't keep continuing to happen. If you turn it off, it went away, a day later, same problem. You turn it off, you turn it back on, everything works fine for two days, again, a problem. Sometimes that means you might have a bad heat exchanger, your furnace is overheating for some reason. So it could be that um, the heat containment side inside of there is not doing its job, there's a bad problem in there, you want to check for heat exchanger. But the way to kind of test to make sure, say you turn it off, you turn it back on, same exact thing. Now we're going to go into limit switches and how to check them. Okay, today the furnace we're working on is an Intertherm furnace, or Nordine furnace, kind of looks like this, but we're going to go over some of the limit switches on uh, um, how this really works on all furnaces um, and kind of look at that. But you can see here, uh, this is the MG1 uh, furnace, Intertherm, but again, they, they can work on Coleman furnaces, the same basic idea. Limit switches act the same way. Um, and on this particular furnace, there's going to be one on the top on all furnaces. There's one on the top, so that's an upper limit or auxiliary or far away limit, auxiliary limit. And inside here this little uh, box we're gonna take a screw off there and screw off there and this comes off here carefully and then uh Inside of here, there's a limit switch there we can see. And usually on Intertherm or Nordine furnaces, you're looking for the blue wires. Trace the blue wires and those get you to the limit switches. So we, Okay, so your furnace is flashing on this Nordine uh, one. It's one code there. It's flashing. And on the little readout here on the door, it tells us one is limit switch is open. And what that tells us is that a circuit or a circle um, has a break in it or a circuit or a circle is open so it has a break in it and the limit switch is saying is the break because the limit switches are the circle that carries the power through things in the furnace and tells it okay everything's fine you're not overheating. So if you're overheating those little limits are going to pop open inside and open that circuit and on these furnaces immediately what's going to happen is the blower is going to come on. So the blower is coming on of saying you're too hot, cool down. So if you have the problem of one flash there and your blower's going, which it should be if there's one flash saying limit switch, or if you have a different diagnostic code, sometimes the Coleman is four um, flashes saying limit, your fan should be running at that point. So if it's not, then it might be a different issue. But one flash limit switch is open means that one of the limit switches is having a problem most of the time. Sometimes circuit board, but we're gonna test and see. So we'll look at that. Okay, I want to go over a little bit on how limit switches work in a furnace. So limit switches are really just overheat sensors. So they have a line going through them at all times. They are have continuity through them. And if they overheat, that breaks the continuity. So if I wanted to text, test one of those, I would put my continuity tester on each side of that, take the wires off, test it. And if it has continuity in it, it's good. Um, it, it does have continuity through it, that's its design. So if it doesn't have continuity through it, that means it's overheated or it's not good. So uh, what we're looking here at is the main power goes to the circuit board, which goes to the transformer, and makes one side of that transformer goes down to the gas valve, finds its way down there. The other side finds its way to the thermostat, and the only open uh, uh, circuit part of this is in the thermostat. So there's an open line in there, and once the house calls for heat, or the thermostat calls for heat, it connects that inside of itself and sends that other power out through the limit switches, which again always have continuity, and into the gas valve, and you have ignition. So, and then there's a few things that happen um, and once that uh, cools down, that thermostat opens up again, stops flow through that system, and uh, the gas goes off, and the furnace is working correctly. 
Okay, so we've talked about what limit switches do on a furnace, and now we need to locate them on your unit. So um, there's an upper limit there, and usually on Nordine they're followed around by blue wires, so everywhere there's blue wires is usually the limit. We want to make sure that we have the limits um, um, found, so we're going to need to take this front plate off, of course, and I want to make sure we turn off the power, and I want to make sure we're real careful. What we're doing, anything inside of this box, full of power, very dangerous power. If you're not very uh, comfortable, I'd say even professional at this, I wouldn't try it. Um, just make sure you're real careful in here. Okay, lots of power in here. But what we're gonna do is we're going to locate the limit switches. Here's one, and we're just gonna have to blame one so that we can bypass them. What we're trying to do is bypass the limit. So sometimes I have a little clip that clips onto one side and clips onto the other with a wire connecting to them. That'll bypass that wire. But I'll assume that we don't all have that. Um, and uh, just the, the layman might not have that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna take a wire, we're gonna strip each end, okay? And we're going to making sure the power is off. We're going to take the spades off of here, off of this limit switches, and we're gonna use that wire to connect them together, okay? And we're gonna insulate them from touching any power or metal or anything, because that's gonna create a spark, of course, and, and be very harmful. So we're gonna put those two wires together, making sure these are not touching anything, the wire's not touching anything, and then we're gonna turn the furnace back on, and if that completes the problem, say the problem goes away, then we're going to say that was a bad limit, we're gonna replace that limit. If it's the same problem, we're gonna put the spades back on that one, we're gonna move on to the next one and do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go over the manual reset limits. So this is one of the manual reset limits. Um, this is where one wire goes, the other wire goes there, and in the middle there's this little clicking button. If it overheats, this little button will pop out. Now, not all of them, or even half of them, are really resettable. They re manually uh, don't reset. They just set, um, you know, by cooling down, they'll, they'll realign. Um, but this one, you actually have to push the button. So um, if you look around your furnace before you start anything else, of course, turn the power off. Look and see if you have one of these manual reset buttons. And if you do, and it goes click, and then uh, say, okay, let's turn the furnace back on and see if it, if it goes to life. And if it goes, everything's fine and it runs just fine, you know that was the problem. Now, don't, that doesn't necessarily mean immediately replace this. It could be a hiccup. It could be the, a power surge. Sometimes I hear that when uh, pe the, the power has gone off in a, in a certain area and they come back on, a lot of people have that same problem. So it could be a power surge of that sort. But it, of that sort. But it could be a very important problem in that the heat exchanger is bad, some of those kinds of things. The furnace is overheating, so maybe it's time to get it professionally looked at if you keep having to do this. So say I, I pop it today, put it back in there, tomorrow, a week later, have to do it again, another week later, have to do it again. That's probably the sign that there is a problem with that furnace. Now you could replace it and say, maybe the switch is bad, and then, but if you, again, if you have to keep doing it after that, um, once a day, every other day, something to that effect, um, figure that the, pro the furnace is probably having a problem. Um, one of the main things is check that filter, check make sure it's clean, make sure it's all new to go, and um, make sure that your registers are all open, those kinds of things that could be uh, getting the furnace heated up. But if none of those are the issue, you keep having to push this, it might be that the furnace is overheating for a potential problem. So get that looked at. Okay, so here's the part of the video where I get a bunch of complaints on how we're not supposed to use wire and those things to bypass, um, you know, this dangerous little way of doing this here. But this is a way of doing it, okay? You want to um, make sure that nothing's touching. You're going to be very careful, very dangerous what we're doing here by bypassing that. We're bypassing the limit with a wire to test that limit to see if what's happening inside the limit is bad. And this is what the limit is actually doing. It's connecting these two wires. So we're connecting the two wires. We're gonna turn the furnace back on. Okay, light stays on normal. Okay, and if your thermostat is up at this point, now you should start hearing the initial motor coming on as though it's gonna do the right thing. We're gonna say that limit is bad. Find the number, we're gonna take that limit off. We're gonna find the numbers on it, get that correct limit, put it back together and hopefully all is well. Okay, I just wanna show you here, um, we are looking specifically for different numbers and temperatures. So if we look here, we can see that on each and every one of these, there's an L140, there's a L110 to 115 to 190, 30, 90, 50. Um, there is a lot of limit switches, and those are all very important. We know that heat rises, of course, so that upper limit is going to have a higher temperature than the lower limit. We wanna make sure that we're getting the right limit for 
our spot that we're going to be replacing. So lower limits are usually 140, 145, those kinds of things, depending on the size of your furnace. Upper limits, 190, those kinds of things, sometimes 200, 185. So uh, when we get the furnace, uh, when we get the limit off of the furnace, what we're looking for is along the limit switch here, there's going to be right on that rim or on the metal part or those kinds of things. Look really careful. So intertherm parts usually have a 626 number and Coleman parts usually have a 7000 number on them. It's going to say L145 or something to that effect. Now if it says F, you know, in a low in a lower thing, that's a fan switch, okay? You don't find that much on newer furnaces at all. But if it says F something, that's fan switch, that's the wrong switch. We're looking at limit switches, L something, okay? So I just wanted to show you how many differences there are in limit switches. There's a wide variety, and this isn't even all of them. But uh, we're looking for that specific part and that specific temperature. Now, you can interchange with that specific temperature if it's the same size and those kinds of things, but be real careful on that.